So welcome back to the RTX Bootcamp. Here we are in video three of our, our short series about how to get started with RTX and our goal of building a real-time timer application. So by the end of this video, you will be ready to build your own application with RTX if you haven't already done so. So let's go ahead and just review. So in video one, we went over how to configure RTX for optimized performance. In video two, we did some simple building and debugging of an RTX application. And finally, here we are in video three. So the goal of our third video here is to build and run a real-time timer application. So this timer application will be using some code that is provided to you by RTX. And what we'll be able to do with this code is measure system response using an oscilloscope. So in the second video, we played with a periodic timer, which was nice. We were able to do some printouts to validate that we were getting some of the interrupts at, at the frequency that we set. However, with this this video will be able to go and connect to the external world, which I'll say in a minute, and use an oscilloscope to truly validate as far as what's going on with the latencies or with the timing of your system. So let's go ahead and get into detail of, of this source code and, and what it means. So the source, co source code that we'll be using is based on a utility called SRTM for short, or System Response Time Measurement Utility. So and in a nutshell, really all this tool does is gather thread level timer latency information. So essentially when you set up a timed interrupt in your system, it measures the time from the when the interrupt happened to when your thread is actually allowed to run. So that's very crucial and it helps you to qualify real-time systems as well. Also, this utility helps to print out your results so you can validate it. And finally, it also generates a tone or a sound on the speaker port. So now you get audible verification on whether or not your system is behaving in real time. In the first video, we ran this tool and that's what generated a tone. And we had two instances where one was happening in real time and the tone was constant and one was happening in non-real time and is very jagged. So we will reproduce that here and you'll get to see the actual sample code that created the effects in, in video one. So again, by the end of this video, you'll be able to have you know, the, the knowledge you need to go ahead and get started with RTX development. So here we are again in Visual Studio. If you remember this from video two, we're going to go through very similar steps in creating the RTX project. So once you open up Visual Studio, we'll go to File, New, Project. When you click on that, you'll then get the traditional Visual Studio application wizard. And when, because we have RTX already installed, here we have some templates here. We'll go ahead again and click the RTX application, and we'll go ahead and fill in some of the default names. So we'll change it, in our case, to SRTM. You can change it to whatever you'd like, and then we'll click OK. And then here's where the RTX application wizard starts. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And we're going to leave these first two the same. So we do want an RTX application. We're going to uncheck, uh, leave that. We don't need TCP IP, IP support. And this is your choice, but we'll leave the string convention to be Unicode. This final piece, though, we'll want to add C runtime support that's multi-threaded. So we'll go ahead and make that change, and then click Next. And then in video, Two, we actually checked these boxes. So that helped us to generate some code from the wizard. In this case, we're not going to do that. We just want a project created with the right header files and libraries, but we don't want any source code to start with because we're going to actually import that in from, from an existing location. So what we're going to do is just leave these check boxes all blank and then click Finish. So once you click Finish, here we are back in Visual Studio. And here's the SRTM project that we created with the wizard. And remember, we didn't add any source files. So now we're ready to add our sample code. So if you right click here, and we're going to go ahead and add, and we're going to add an existing item. And remember, we talked about this SRTM example. So where we're going to go to get it is, we'll go to the installation directory for RTX. So it'll be your C drive program files, interval 0, RTX. So once you come here, you'll see the samples folder. Open up that. You see there's a lot of samples provided with RTX. We'll scroll down to the SRTM folder, click on that. And then here, you'll see the SRTM.c file. So we'll go ahead and double click there. And it's added to the project. We'll open it up and just give you a, a brief tour through it. So here at the top, you see in the comments, it's otherwise known. SRTM is also known as the 
system response time measurement utility. So again, it, it measures the latencies of the system. And we scroll down, you can see that here we're setting up some of the pound defines for the speaker port. So this is the address. You know, although this is a simple example using a speaker port, in your case, this could be you know, a PCI address that you're writing to. So something that re represents real hardware in your system, maybe an I.O. board. But in this case, for simplicity, it's just a speaker port. If we scroll down some more, only things to highlight here is under some of the variables, this 15 seconds is how long the demo will run when you hit function 5 or, or debug run. And if you scroll down some more, here is the default timer period. So this is what we'll be playing with. By default, it's set up to one millisecond. So we'll come back to this. And then we're going to change some of these default arguments. This SRTM utility is designed to be run at a command line. So you're to send in some variables at the command line. But since we'll be running directly from Visual Studio, we'll want to change one of these, which we'll get to in a minute. And so other than that, I'll just scroll down to the bottom here and point out Really, the important part is right here, the timer handler function. So this is where your function, or in our case, where we're going to toggle the sound port every time the timed interrupt occurs. So again, toggle the tone speaker for audio feedback. And if we scroll down, we'll see the actual lines of code that will toggle the speaker port. So here it is. If the sound's turned on, then it's going to turn on the, the tone and vice versa. So it'll keep flipping this bit back and forth at the set periodic frequency that we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to the top of the code here where we'll make our changes. So we scroll down here. So remember our HAL timer period is set up for 100 microseconds. So let's go ahead and do a build where we're going to do 100 microseconds. So we'll put this as one. And again, remember our HAL timer periods in terms of 100 nanoseconds. So the easiest way is remove the last zero and the way to think about it and here's your 100 microseconds. Okay, And then remember this SRTM tool is designed to be run at a command line so we'll want to change this value right here from fastest. I don't want it to run the fastest. I want it to look at my default timer period so we'll change this to false. Okay, And that's it. So let's go ahead and go to build. Okay, so now we're built, and we're going to go ahead and go to debug and start debugging our function 5. So the tone you just heard, that's actually the speaker port being toggled at 100 microsecond intervals. So remember in the code, we set up our default timer period to be equal to that of our HAL timer period. So what we've done here is we've hooked up an oscilloscope directly to the speaker port and we're here measured it and I've captured it so let's take a little closer look at what we've captured. So here is the output of our speaker port toggling at 100 microseconds. So if you look here, you know, please excuse the, the sloping curves. It's not a true square wave because the speaker port is really not to be designed to be running at this high frequency. So if you look here, here we can see from when the speaker ports toggle down to where it's toggled back up again, you're talking a delta of 100 microseconds. So if you were to see any true latencies in this system using this SRTM demo, you most likely will start to, to see it deviate. And again, that's why we were able to hear such a constant tone because what this 100 microseconds translates into is a, a 10 kilohertz sound wave. And so that gave a very high pitch, little irritating, but a very consistent sound. Okay, so this is the output for the 100 microseconds. So now let's go back to our code and make some changes. All right, here we are back in our SRTM project. And then this time we'll change our default timer period to 2 milliseconds. So here it is. Again, my, ignore the, one, the zero there, and it's 2,000 microseconds with 2 milliseconds. And we'll go to build. And we'll go to debug and run. So as you just heard, the tone is quite different from the first tone we heard. So now, remember, we've set up our default timer period to be 2 milliseconds. So that's a big difference. And so we've gone ahead and captured the output on our oscilloscope. And so let's take a closer look here in what we're seeing. So if you look here on the scope output, so here was the 
two millisecond periods. And you can see here from between, from when it was toggle low to toggle back high again, we have a difference of two milliseconds exactly, which gives you a 250 hertz sound wave, which is why you heard such a drop in the audible frequency. So as you've just seen, it's quite straightforward to build a real-time timer application and to actually use an oscilloscope to measure and verify its performance. So now we're here at the end of our three-part series closing up the RTX Boot Camp, and now you have the necessary tools you need to go ahead and get started with your RTX development. Thanks for tuning in.